Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Becca Hathaway, and I run the informal education programs at um, the UCAR Center for Science Education, including the programs we have up here at the Mesa Lab. And we're happy to have you all here today as we celebrate our uh, membership in the Smithsonian Affiliations Program. And we'll be talking about that today, as well as hearing um, a talk about climate communication from Jeff Keel. So first off, I'd like to introduce Emily Kobabe Aman, who's the director of UCAR Community Programs. Thanks, Becca. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad you had no idea there were going to be this many people. I'm glad I dressed up because, <laughs> you know, it, it really wouldn't have been good otherwise. I want to take a moment to thank you all for coming today. This, this represents an important step forward for UCAR education programs. Um, I've been on the job for about 18 months now. Sometimes it seems a lot longer. And one of the things that we've really been trying to do is to integrate our education programs in such a way that we can become a national center of excellence for STEM education. And the Smithsonian Affiliations really represents the first piece of that. Um, we like the Smithsonian Affiliation, not just because it's the Smithsonian, but because it represents best practices in informal education. And it really builds on the work that has been long ongoing here at the Mesa Lab as we try new things, we experiment with, with interactives, as we try to engage um, all of the visitors at the Mesa Lab in new and exciting ways. I'm absolutely convinced that the Smithsonian affiliation will allow us to extend that work even farther. Particularly important as the new climate exhibit comes online, as we begin to um, incorporate things like climate voices into the work that we do. And so I want to take a special moment and thank Harold um, and the Smithsonian team for coming out today because this means a whole lot to this organization. Thank you very much. That's all I'm going to say because, you know, it's enough. Uh, I'd like to introduce Harold Kloster, who is the director of the Smithsonian Affiliations. Thank you very much. And uh, it means a lot to us, too. It's, uh, this is a very important relationship that we're starting. And just in the last half hour, I've, I've learned more about connections between UCAR and the Smithsonian than I even realized. So I think there's, there's a lot to build on that is already in place. Uh, Becca and, uh, and Emily, thank you so much for your kind introduction. And good morning, everyone. It's a really a pleasure to be here on this special occasion. I am deeply honored to be here on behalf of the Smithsonian Institution to announce our new partnership, what we call an affiliation, with the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research. The common interests and goals of UCAR and the Smithsonian are so closely aligned that a partnership between our organizations almost seems inevitable and probably should have happened a long time ago. Both of our organizations are at the cutting edge of complicated and critical efforts to understand what is happening in our world, how climate change is affecting everything, and what we can do about it. Before I go on, let me first acknowledge a few special friends in the audience and thank them for joining us. My Smithsonian colleague, Jennifer Brundage, there you are. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer is one of our national outreach managers and a part-time resident of Boulder. And uh, I don't know, is Tim Nimps here? I, he was supposed to, he's the director of the Littleton Museum, a, a great museum outside of Denver and a longtime Smithsonian affiliate. Um, maybe he'll show up. Uh, and my wife, Betsy Kloster, raise your hand. <laughs> An early childhood advocate and someone who speaks for the generation that will inherit the world that we leave for them. A good one, I hope. Thanks for being here, I appreciate it. UCAR and the Smithsonian are no strangers to each other. In 1997, NCAR's climate change model received the Smithsonian's Computer World Award and was accessioned into our permanent research collection of information technology. I'm not sure how you exactly accession a climate change model. It's, it's not a thing, but, but we have it, and we're very grateful. <laughs> we're very grateful to have it. Scientists from both organizations have engaged in joint research and have presented together on prestigious uh, gatherings. We now set our sights on the greater possibilities and opportunities of working together, as Emily has said, in the cause of education and public education. And I think we all agree there is much 
that needs to be known. Now, while most people are aware of the Smithsonian's great assembly of museums and the national treasures that are housed within it, the original Star Spangled Banner, the Wright Brothers Airplane, the Hope Diamond, and even Kermit the Frog, Many are not aware of the profound and historic role the Smithsonian has played in the study of climate, atmosphere, and environment. As soon as the Smithsonian was established in 1846, Joseph Henry, the first secretary of the Smithsonian and an esteemed scientist and co-inventor of the telegraph, he imagined the possibility of using this revolutionary device the telegraph, to establish a national network of weather watchers. We were hardly a nation at the time, and little, if anything, was known about weather patterns. The plan was put in place a year later in 1847, and in no time at all, more than 500 individuals from all corners of the country were recruited to record the local weather, take their findings to the nearest telegraph station every day and send it to the Smithsonian where pins were placed on a giant map in the great, cast, the great hall of the Smithsonian castle. And this afforded for the first time the ability to predict weather patterns and to track storms. This program eventually became the National Weather Service. So we're very proud of our role in, in the earliest days of weather uh, research. Over the past 160 years, the Smithsonian's interest in understanding and documenting environment has grown not only globally, but through our work in astrophysics to the climates of other planets in our solar system and outside of our solar system, and to the very edges of the universe and to the very beginning of time. Climate change is high on our agenda as it is here. The large number of Smithsonian scientists working around the world see the impact of a warming planet each day in the course of their diverse studies. A sample of our investigations includes anthropologists learning from native peoples of Alaska who see warming as a threat to their 4,000 year old culture, marine biologists, who are tracking the impacts of climate change on delicate corals in tropical waters, coastal ecologists investigating the many ways that climate change is affecting the Chesapeake Bay, and our Forest Global Earth Observatory, monitoring six million trees in 59 forests in 24 countries, the only network of standardized forest monitoring sites that span the globe. Similar to UCAR, the dissemination of knowledge gained through research is a public responsibility of the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian's unique combination of museums, traveling exhibits, publications, affiliated organizations, media, and web-based tools provide platforms to reach hundreds of millions of people each year around the world. Our goal is to explain in clear and objective terms the causes and effects of climate change as documented in our research and in the research of colleagues like you. The urgency of climate change requires that we boost and expand our efforts to increase public knowledge and that we inspire others through education and by example. This is why our new partnership with UCAR is so important. Your strength in research and your accomplishments in education and public outreach add a vital dimension to the work that we are doing and that we want to do. Together, we will be able to reach so many more people in new, exciting, and hopefully impactful ways. Like UCAR, the Smithsonian is committed to helping our society make the wise choices to ensure that future generations inherit a diverse world that sustains our natural environments and cultures for centuries to come. We are so honored to now have a home and a, a new family in Boulder and to be working side by side with you, Carr, and all of you in this effort. Thank you very much for your support.
thank you again for coming out today. And uh, now it's my privilege to invite Emily uh, back. Uh, no moment like this would be worthy without a little ritual moment of the Certificate of Affiliation signed by our Secretary G. Wayne Clough and authorized by our Board of Regents, which is headed by the, the Chief Justice of the United States and Vice President and members of Congress and, and elsewhere. So we're very honored and thank you very much and look forward to a long and fruitful partnership. So we step aside from the podium. Yeah.